Well, we're so glad to be here this morning. We appreciate the good songs of Zion. I know they were a great blessing to you. But if you got your Bibles, let's turn over to Matthew, the 26th chapter. It's where the Lord has led me this week to preach from. And I hope that here on Palm Sunday, we can say something to help you in these difficult times. I'm excited what the next two weeks, this weekend and next weekend, represents. Yeah. I know that a lot of people love Christmas time, and I love it. I love the lights. I love the presents. I love the fellowship and getting together and all that's wonderful. But there's something about Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday that I love. I love it. And I get to thinking about that. It gets me all stirred up. And I know the Lord led me over this way. I've been listening to a lot of good preaching this week. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say it. I say to me this week, I've never, ever got to see so much good preaching on Facebook. And so we have no excuse. We can go on there and be a part of services all across right. the country, around yeah. the world, Man. and listen to good preaching, good singing. And uh, I've been listening to some of our uh, brothers over in the Philippines, uh, Brother R.J. and uh, Brother uh, L. Lloyd, uh, being with groups and singing and preaching. And uh, there are missionaries that we support and back. And, man, what a blessing to see that work going on there. And they're feeling the same effects we are, but they're continuing right on on live stream and different things just like we are, like everybody's trying to do. And we're so thankful to be able to come to you this way today. So let's look in the Word of God here in Matthew 26, and we'll break in about the 36th verse. Then came Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Notice verse 39. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And he cameth unto his disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, listen, except I drink it, thy will be done. Let us pray. Father, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you speak through these stammering lips. And God, that your word will go out this morning and penetrate in the hearts of men and women, boys and girls. And Lord, that we can see through your scripture, Lord, the agony and what you went through, that we may have this right today to worship you. God, help us today, Lord. We love you. We feel that stirring of the Holy Spirit. And we need your leadership, Lord, this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Let's go on and read a few more verses. Verse 43. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were very heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Here we see in this chapter Christ 
has spent time with his disciples in the latter part of these chapters, eating the Last Supper. And he's left the upper room and there at Mount Zion has traveled through the Kindrian Valley and across the brook there. And he's entered into a place called the Garden of Gethsemane, which he came down through the valley, the Kindrian Valley, and up to the Garden of Gethsemane there. And I got to thinking about that and it does a little research on it. So for a few moments, I would like to just take you into the the vestibule of Calvary, which is Gethsemane, and show you just for a moment of time what Christ has went through for you and I, that we could be here today to lift our hands and bless His holy name. You may say, Brother Gary, I'm not in the church house. Uh, How can I worship and not be in the church house? I'm glad that the church is not a building, it's a people. And we can worship the Lord right where we're at in our homes. We can lift up holy hands and bless His name. The Lord's right there with you, just like He's right here with me. We can worship together because the Lord has put us together by the way of internet. And we can worship Him that way. So you need to lift up your hands. When you feel it, raise your hands. When the tears run down, shout for victory. Give Him glory because He's worthy of it this morning amen Amen. i got to thinking about this message and what the lord had spoke to me so i want to preach a message this morning entitled what's in the cup what's in the cup and i brought a cup today an old cup and just wanted to use this cup today and i want to preach a message entitled what's in the cup There's three things that you must know that's in this cup. There's a lot of things that's in the cup, but there's three things that I want to cover today that's in this cup. Number one, it's in this cup, is sin. Sin is in this cup. Let's look at verse 39. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless... Not as I will, but as thou wilt. We see here that Christ has come obedient to the suffering of the cross. He's been obedient to what he's been sent on this earth to do. And that's to die for sinful man. And at this moment, he's going into the garden and he's taking on all of our sins for a little while here in this garden. He's brought his disciples with him and they're there on the outskirts of the garden. And he's asked them to wait there and pray because he's going to go just a little bit farther there. And he's going to kneel down and he's going to begin to pray about this cup that he's going to have to drink. And he's thinking about what he's going to have to go through. And there's great pain coming with this cup. And he knows what's about to happen. He's lived 33 and a half years. And he's thought about what he's going to have to do. He's preached the gospel. He's been a witness. He's healed people. He's raised people from the dead. He's been the witness. He's done it all. But now he's come to do what he's come to do. Which is pay the awful price for you and I. Over in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, the Bible says, For he was made, he said, He hath made him to be sin for us. God has made Jesus to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God. I'm telling you all today that He was made sin for you and I. He was brought down and brought with the sin up on Him that you and I have committed. As He went into the garden to pray and He knelt down at that rock and He began to pray in great anguish before the Lord and asking God to let this cup pass from Him. Could you imagine the sin that's in this cup? I got to think thinking about, brothers, all the sin that I've committed in my life, every lie that I've ever told, every mistake I've ever made, anything I've done that I wouldn't want somebody else to know about is in this cup. Everything you've ever done is in this cup. I tell you, I've met people and talked to people that's asked God to forgive them for sins in their life, like drunkenness. I've met people that's had abortions and, and wanted to get forgiveness from God for that. That's in the cup right today. It's in the cup. He's there in the garden. He's took the abortion. He's took the sin. He's took the murder. He's took the rape. He's took the lying, the cheating, the stealing. Took all the witness. I took all the wickedness that you and I have done and drank it in this cup right here. Every time me and you do something, that's what he died for because of the cup. 
You may say, today I'm not that bad a person. I've not done that much wrong in my life. I'm going to tell you something. When we were born in this life, we're born into sin. We're born without the fellowship of God. We are of the sin nature. You don't have to teach a baby how to sin. As they begin to grow, they learn how to sin. They learn how to lie. They learn how to do all these things. It's just like it's inbred in them. we got to teach them not to do that. But Christ took every bit of that to the cross of Calvary. But here He is in the garden. He's taking on my sin. He's taking on your sin. You may be out there today and you have failed God and failed God and failed God. Seem like you can't never get where you need to be. I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to sell out to this world and give it all to God and He'll bless you in your life. you got to come to Him and submit your life. A willing vessel and God will uh, restore you and set your feet on a solid rock. You'll be able to live like you never lived. You'll come out of the hell holes of the world. God will bless your life if you'll live for Him and let Him He's took that sin that you've committed he drank it there in the Garden of Gethsemane that you wouldn't have to live that way. If you'll give it to Him today, He'll change your life. Amen. I'm talking about sin that's in the cup. Amen. Over in Galatians 1.4, He said, Who gave Himself for our sin that He might deliver us from this present world. He's going to deliver us from this world one day after a while. We're going to step from here to glory one day after a while. Only way we can do that is by the Garden of Gethsemane when He drank down your sins and mine. I'll tell you what, I'm not worthy, but I'm glad that He's worthy to be worshipped today. In First Peter 2.24, He said, Who is His own self? Who his own self, bearing our sins in his body on a tree, that way being dead to sin, should live under righteousness, by whose stripes we are healed. I'm glad we're healed by the stripes of the Lord. Amen. That's how we receive our healing in this land. Is we're going to have to trust Him and know that He can deliver us from this mess that we're in. I'm glad He's our only hope. I'm glad He took on all this so you and I could have a right to the tree of life. He drank sin for us. Amen. That's what He drank in the cup. That day He went to the garden to pray. We can read in the scriptures and it tells us he was in great agony. He went through a lot for you and I. Why? Because he knew what he was going to have to face. He knew what he was going to have to go through. He hadn't been to Pilate's Hall yet. He hadn't been to the whipping post yet. He hadn't been through all of that yet. But he knew it was ahead. You and I will come to church and, and I think a lot of us took things for granted. And I believe in the last little bit. The Lord has woke some people up. I hope we'll never take church for granted again. I hope we'll never take gathering in the house of the Lord for granted again. I hope the next uh, men's prayer breakfast we have, we have to to open the doors up and have it outside because there's so many men wanting to get in. I'm glad that I hope the next women's meeting we have to do the same thing. I pray the next time we open up the church doors, we have to set chairs out in the parking lot and set up speakers so everybody can hear. I don't never want to take for granted being in the house of the Lord. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. You ought to say amen right there at the house. I love being in the house of the Lord. I love being with God's people. But I begin to think about as I studied this message, this cup of sin that he had to take on for you and I. It wasn't just a cup of sin, but number two, it was a cup of agony. Not just sin, but agony. Let's look at verse 41. The Bible says here, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is is weak here we see in this verse that in his spirit he's ready to go and make that sacrifice and take on the the agony of this cup and he's willing to do that but his flesh is weak and he's struggling in the flesh just like you and i are because he is as much 
flesh as he is God. And he's struggling within himself of taking on this cup that he's facing. Let's look at Isaiah 53, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. We did as it were, we hid our face from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. When we see these few verses in this scripture, I thought about acquainted. That means he was familiar with grief. He knows what it is to lose someone and see someone die. He's felt that grief and felt that pain. He knows what it is to go through that. And then in the latter part of that verse, and it says, we esteemed him not. Esteemed in that verse means uh, to not respect. So we, we didn't even respect him. And I'm telling you, at this time, he's suffering great anguish and going through great things. Over in Galatians 3.13, the Bible says, Christ hath redeemed us uh, from the curse of the law. But being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. And we see that through Roman torture, the cross is one of the worst sufferings that you can go through. And he's went to the cross and he, he's going to pay that awful price there on the cross. He sees ahead of time what he's going to have to do. But he knows you and I can't pay that curse. He's going to take that curse on for you and I. And he's going to go and pay that ultimate price. That's what's in the cup of agony. He sees it in there. He knows what he's headed for. And he thinks about that. And he's dreading that physically in his body. But he's willing to do that for you and I and go all the way and pay that ultimate price. I thought about it in Luke 22, verse 44. It says, being in in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down on the ground. Uh, He prayed in great anguish and great suffering for you and I, that he, that he would pay this price for sin. He would pay this price in agony. That's what the cup is. He's facing this agony and he's dreading this time. Why is he dreading? Because he's God and he's man all in one. He knows what's about to happen and he's going to go all the way and pay that price for you and I, friend. Can you think about the cup of agony that our Lord paid for you and I? Look at Hebrews uh, chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, then he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. He's tasted death for every single man, woman, boy, and girl in this world. He's faced this death, and he's took on this cup, and he knows what he's headed for. He's willing to take the curse of the cross. He's willing to take all of your sin and pay the ultimate price for you and I, that we might have a right to the tree of life, that we won't be separated from God. How thankful we ought to be for what Christ has done for us amen amen i praise the lord this morning for what he's done for me he didn't only take on the cup of sin but he drank down the cup of agony for us that's what he done there in the garden of gethsemane he's there in great anguish and praying and number three he drank punishment not only sin is in this cup not only the anguish is in this cup But it's a cup of punishment. Great punishment. He knows if he don't go to the cross of Calvary, that man is going to be eternally separated from God. And they're going to pay an awful price in hell for all eternity. I'm telling you, friend, it's once appointed unto man to die. But after this, the judgment. We're coming to judgment. 
But I'm glad we're not going alone. I'm glad that Christ went all the way and, and drank the bitter cup and paid the ultimate price. I don't have to go to judgment alone. I'm glad I go to judgment with the Lord Jesus Christ on my life. His blood is up on my soul. I'll stand before God one day. It won't matter that I've been a pastor of a church. It won't matter I've held great position. It won't matter what my name is. It won't matter what I've done or where I've been. All that'll matter is when God looks at me and he sees his son's blood up on my heart. He'll say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful just over a few things. Now enter into the joys of the Lord. That's the only thing that's going to get me there. I couldn't drink the cup. He drank it for me. Amen. Bless his holy name. And he drank it for you. The cup of punishment. Let's look at verse 46. He says, rise, talking to his disciples. Let us be going. Behold, he it is that's at hand that doth portray me. What's he talking about? He's talking about Judas, one of his own. He has left the Last Supper there. If you'll remember studying back in Scripture, he told him there, he says, one of you are going to betray me. And he ever even reached over and told him, what you're going to do, you need to do it quickly. Judas got up and left the supper table. And he went and did that awful deed, betrayed the Lord, sold him for 30 pieces of silver. And that's what he's telling his disciples that are there waiting now, waiting and praying. He said, let us be going. Behold, he, he is at hand that doth betray me. That means Judas is coming with a band of soldiers to arrest the Lord in the garden. The Lord is there praying for you and I, making a way that you and I can go to this place called heaven. I'm telling you, friend, this is one of the first messages I preached when God called me so many, many, many years ago to preach the gospel. I preached on this very subject. Maybe not this same message, but even then and now I can feel in my heart that lonely night when our Lord was there and he felt all alone and he'd asked his disciples to go and pray and, and watch and pray. I'm going to go over here and pray to the Father. I'm in pain. I'm in agony. But I'm going to go over here and I'm going to kneel down and I'm going to pray to the Father and I'm going to ask the Father uh, to have mercy and, and it let this cup pass from me. But if he don't want it to pass, I'll be willing to drink it for all of those that are going to die lost. I want to go and pay the price so they'll have a way to come be with me someday in heaven. I'm telling you this morning, friend, he paid a great price for you and I. We don't take, take it for granted what the Lord did. When we look at this cup, we want to think about what he's done, the price that he's paid, and be grateful for the punishment that he went through for you and I. We need to be thankful for that. Over in 1 Peter 3.18, the Bible says, for Christ also hath once suffered for sin. The just for the just. That he might bring us to God. Might bring us to God. There's no way we could ever go be with the Lord in any way if Jesus hadn't have been that go-between, hadn't been that sacrifice, hadn't been the one to pay the price. You and I would be lost for hell forever if it hadn't been for Jesus paying that awful price, drinking down that bitter cup of sin that you and I filled up. We're the ones that filled the cup up. We're the ones that had it in the cup. We're the ones that's guilty. But I'm glad he's not standing, pointing his finger at you and I and telling us how good for nothing that we are how dirty rotten sinners we are how that we can't come in here and we can't do that you're not accepted here i'm glad that christ has never done that he said come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden now i'll give you rest amen i thank the lord that he took me just as i am i wasn't wearing a suit when i came to the lord i sure didn't have a tie on i was down low i felt like i had the whole world upon my back 
back. And I got to thinking about the punishment that he went through for you and I. And I came down to an old-fashioned altar. And I bowed my knee down. And I said, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. And guess what he done? He took that cup and he drank it on down so he could forgive me of my sins and make a way that I could go to heaven one day. That's what he did for me. And that's what he'll do for you, friend, if you'll trust him today. You can trust him right there over in Isaiah 53, verse 7. Listen to what the Bible says. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before its shearer is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. What does all that mean, preacher? I thought about oppressed in that first part of that verse. Let's read it like it means it right here. I looked at that meaning oppressed and it means heavy burden. Afflicted means physical suffering. So it may read just like this. He was heavy burden and he was physically suffering. Yet, <laughs> he opened, not his mouth, amen, of what he was going through. He wanted to pay that price because he knowed we were doomed for hell if he didn't pay the price. I'm going to tell you, let me go on down into the on down into the story a little bit, down to the cross of Calvary. When he was hanging there paying that price for you and I, he was hanging there suffering from head to toe, bleeding all over, uh, just about every inner he had hanging out. He was was beat half to death and he could any minute call for 10,000 legions of angels said get me off of this cross and kill every one of them and it would have happened in a split second but I'll tell you what no doubt he knowed he done been to the garden he done drank the cup of sin he drank the cup of agony he drank the cup of punishment why now he's paying the physical price so you and I could go to heaven one day after a while that's what this is all about here on Palm Sunday they're worshiping they're glorifying him as he's coming into the town but it ain't just a few days later they're crying crucify him that's just the way it happens sometimes they'll praise you one day and crucify you the next but I'm glad that God never turns his back on anybody amen he'll love you unconditionally no matter who you are or where you've been or what you've done he loves you today why because his son has paid the ultimate price for you and I. He's paid that price to help you and I to get to this place that's called heaven. He loves you today. I hope that you can see that. Let me give you one more verse that I hope will help you see this cup of punishment. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, the Bible says he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of, of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. We are healed. Bless his holy name. I wanted to look up that word wounded. Uh, that word wounded can mean pierced, torn, cut, and broken. Uh, that word transgression uh, uh, over there, it can, it can mean a lot of things. It's a violator of the law. I'll tell you, buddy, he was broken. He was bruised. He was pierced. He was torn for our violation of the law. He was bruised with our iniquity. Iniquity meaning wickedness. He was bruised because of our wickedness is what he was going through. I'm telling you, friend, today, and I'm, I got three fingers pointing back at me. We've got wickedness in our life, but that's why Christ went to the cross of Calvary to pay for our wickedness so we wouldn't have to die lost without him. I'm telling you today, I don't care what you've done or where you've been. Christ loves you today. He'll take you just like you are right now today. He'll save you just like you are i don't care who tells you they don't want you i don't care if you've been told you're not welcome somewhere you're not welcome in some church down the road i don't care if uh, people that claim to be christians won't talk to you i'll tell you who you can talk to get on your knees and you can talk to god he'll talk to you he'll take you just like you are really will he do that for you you better believe he will 
That's why he sent the best that heaven had for people like you and me. You and me, that's the kind of people he died for. He came to seeking to save that which is lost. And he came looking for me. (laughs) He came looking for you, friend. Right where you're at, Christ came looking for you. You know what? People make this phrase sometimes, and I know why they say it. They mean well, and I'm not down in people that say it. I probably said it one time. Probably testified, I'm glad I found the Lord. But I'm going to tell you something today. I didn't find the Lord. He found me. I was the one lost without God. He came out into the pasture fields. He come out into the hell holes of the world and found me in my sin and brought me out of that mess and saved me from my wickedness. Saved me from my good for nothing. If I'd have got what I deserved, I'd have been in hell today. But God came looking for me. And he's looking for you right now. And he'll save you. I'm telling you, Christ drank this bitter cup because he knowed you and I wasn't perfect. He knowed you and I were going to sin. He knowed you and I would have no way to ever get to heaven or ever have a better life or ever have peace in this life. And he said, you know what? Father, I'll go. All before man was ever thought of. He already knew what he was facing. He knew man would have to have a way back to God. He knew Adam and Eve were going to sin in the garden before they ever sinned. People say, well, why did he make it and why did he do it? I'm glad he did it because he wanted to give man a free choice. I'm not made to serve God. I serve him because I love him. And I make a choice to serve him. He said, choose you today whom you're going to serve. I'm glad I choose the Lord because of the cup he drank for me amen he drank that cup for me but he talked about in that last part of that verse and with his stripes we are healed we can see that over in matthew 27 there in verses 27 and 28 there in the common judgment hall Pilate has sent him to be scourged what does that mean it means to be whipped and they would whip them Uh, Give them 39 stripes, save one. Because if they did more than that, he would, uh, they found out that the body couldn't take it. They would, they would expire. They would die from the beating. You know, when they led Christ there into the common judgment hall and he chained him down to that whipping post and they began to take that cat of nine tails and they began to whip the back of my Savior. And every single stripe, they would hit him. They talked about the way that whip was made. It was made with bone and, and different things entwined in the, in the, in the, uh, things of the whip. And every time they would lash his back and pull it away, it would rip bone and, and it would rip the muscle and, and all the tendons and the blood would fly. And he never opened her, opened his mouth. He just knelt down there and let them beat. And as the blood ran down there in the common judgment hall the soldiers took great pleasure in beating your lord and beating my lord and making a mockery of him and they didn't stop there when they got done beating him there that day they put the purple robe upon him to mock him and make fun of him and they may have mocked him in and they may have crucified him then but i'm telling you someday soon he's coming back king of kings and lord of lords for you and I. He ain't coming back to drink a cup. He ain't coming back to go to the cross of Calvary. But he's coming back victorious to take his church home. What a day that's going to be for the people of God. Amen. It's going to be wonderful. He drank this cup for you and I. So I hope today you can see for just a little bit in my simple Way, I wished I could open my heart and show you what I can see in this cup. But I see the sins of all men. I see all of my sin. And I see the sins of the whole world down in this cup. I see the sins from the beginning. I see the sins now. And I see the sins in the future. And I'm glad Christ said, you know what? I'll take that cup and I'll drink it. And I'll pay for the sins from the beginning. 
the sins now and the sins in the future. All you got to do is come unto me and confess me with your mouth. Believe in your heart that Christ is raised from the dead. That God has raised his son from the dead. And he said, thou shall be saved. He'll save you today if you'll come unto the Lord. If you'll believe he drank this bitter cup for you. If you'll dream, he, if you'll believe that he went to the cross of Calvary for you, if you'll believe that he went into the grave for you, if you'll believe that he rose that third morning for you, and you confess that and believe that in your heart, he said he'd save you today. That's a promise of God. You can be a new person. You can be a new creature. Your life can be changed forever. Whatever the drug addiction is, whatever the alcoholism is, whatever the sexual perversion is whatever it is that's going on in your life your whole life could change today this very moment this very day could change everything for your entire future and eternity it could change right now really yes really he could change right there in your home let me give you this and i'll close back in 1981 or 1980 my mom and dad was lost without the Lord. And my, me and my brother were. We lived in the hills of Kentucky there. And my daddy had been a rough man, an alcoholic. And been, we'd been through a lot. He was a hard-working man, but he loved to party and he loved to drink and do all those things. And we didn't know anything about Christ, didn't know anything about living for God, church, nothing. We hadn't been there, hadn't been taught that way. We didn't know nothing. But you know what? He got under old time conviction. My Aunt Lois came and, and brought my daddy a, a, a album of a, a group called the Singing Johnsons. And uh, some of them probably watching today. I hope they are. And God worked through that family, the singing Johnsons. And my daddy would take that album, put it on the old record player, and he'd play that album and listen to songs as it would play and learning to lean. Uh, brother, I think it was Brother Rick Johnson that wrote that song, I believe, and called Learning to Lean. Yes, I'm learning to lean. On Jesus, my daddy got under old time conviction. He'd heard the preach word of God. He knew what he had to do. Here come the songs of Zion. They begin to prick on his heart and knock on his heart. And he began to get under old time conviction just like you are right now. You may be sitting there and your heart's beating away with you. You don't know what to do. Daddy was the same way. And I was the same way. And everybody's listening under the sound of my voice. Has to come the same way. Way. <clears throat> you got to come with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. What's that mean? That means you're sorry for who you are and what you've done. Contrite spirit being wanting to make a change, wanting to be a different person than you've ever been. And I'm glad my daddy that night in his home and my mother in their home, not at the church house, not with the preacher standing with his hand out. Not with everybody with their nice clothes on and everybody congregating and the songs are playing. Nothing like that. The preacher came and asked my daddy if he'd like to pray. And he'd been through enough suffering that day and the Holy Spirit drawing him. And they got down in, in our double wide there in Kentucky and he got on his knees and on his face before God, him and my mother, and give their life to the Lord. And you can do the same thing today right there in your home. You can get on your knees. And you can call on a holy God. I'm talking about the one that went to the Garden of Gethsemane and drank the bitter cup. That's the one you can call on. You can say, Lord, here I am a sinner. Lord, I don't know what to pray, but the preacher said if I would just ask you to save me you'd do it and he'll do it right there in your home right where you're at right now he'll save your unworthy soul just like he saved my unworthy soul he loves you today and he don't want you to die lost don't let him drink this cup in vain for you don't let what he's done be done in vain when we reject the blood of Jesus Christ and His love and the price that He paid on the cross of Calvary, 
for saying no to everything he's done. Don't say no today. Would you accept him today? There's a number on our screen right now that you can call if you don't know how to pray. There's brothers and and sisters that will pray with you. They'll take a Bible and help you and show you how to be saved. Take the Word of God. I've taken my little way today and tried to show you through the Word of God what that cup, what's in that cup, just a few things. There's a lot of stuff in that cup that He suffered for you and I. But friend, I hope today you'll trust Him as your personal Savior. I want to pray with you right now. You would, you bow your head right there where you're at and you pray with me. I'll help you this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Fathers, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, I've preached my heart to these folks this morning. And that one that's under the sound of my voice right now, Lord, you tell us in your word, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their hearts that God has raised Christ Jesus from the dead. You said, Thou shall be saved. Lord, I'm asking right now for that one that's at home, that's troubled and needs you, Lord. They've never been saved. They're asking right now, Lord, to save them. There in verse 13 of John 10, or or Romans 10 and 13, you said, Whosoever, Call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. You didn't say should be saved in that verse. You said shall. So that one, Lord, right now that's asking you, would you save them, Lord? Thank you, Lord, for saving them. Thank you for what you're doing right now in their life. I pray for that discouraged Christian. Lord, that may be wayward right now, away from you. God, may they realize what you've paid for them through the bitter cup. May they renew their life and be different from this day forward. God, thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. For we ask this in Jesus' name. And amen and amen. Well, I love you today, friend. Church, I love you with all of my heart. I miss you. I miss you not being here in the sanctuary. But I'm glad that we're doing what our government has asked. We're trying to respect and take care of people. We want to be a help to you in some way. Call this number on the screen. Let us help you. And if you need to come by and see me, I'm here Monday through Friday, 10 to 12 every day. You can call me on my phone. You can send us a message. We'll be glad to help. And anyway, if you're elderly and need some help, where our church is full of young people, we'll love to come and bring you groceries and try to be a help in any way that we can. But if you've had a change in your life today and committed to Christ, call that number. We'd love to send you some material that will help you in your new walk with Christ and answer some questions for you maybe that you don't understand. We just want to be a blessing to you. Until we meet again, God bless you from here at the pulpit of Vickers Chapel from this pastor's heart. God bless you and we love you.